When we talk about economic control, controlling the businesses and the commerce that comes into our neighborhoods, how does that look? How do we as just regular people control what comes, like the Koreans, like the Chinese, you're not going to a Chinese neighborhood and see a black salon, no, but you not. certainly can see the reverse. Everybody lives off of us. Yes. That's right. And that's why they're called in our teaching the blood suckers of the poor. They're like leeches. They offer nothing and take everything. So if we are tired of it, then we need to sit down, have some town hall meetings, call our politicians out, tell them what we want, and go to work. Go to work taking control of our community. It's not going to be difficult when they see we mean business. And uh, as far as policing the community is concerned, there are many in Congress that are fighting for community policing. Mm -hmm. Now, you go over here to the, the hospital, Chicago University mm -hmm. Hospital. Mm -hmm. They got their own police force. They own just about all this uh, territory on the south side, and they own their own uh, police department. They can make arrests. And write tickets. And write tickets. I got two of them. And kill. Mm -hmm. And kill. And kill. Mm -hmm. So what about us? What about our control? See, when you own it, you have a right to determine how what you own is going to be handled. Right. That's why to take our young gangbangers and make them not talk about control the black community with guns, control it by owning it. Right. And when you own it, then you got a stake in it. We send you down to City Hall. You be the alderman right. yeah. to yes. write the laws that affect what you own. Come on. Now you're talking like a man and a woman that is earning respect from others because you're doing what intelligent people do. They right. control where they live. Right. Yeah. And do, if you go to a gated community, don't they stop you? Right at Absolutely. The gate. Right at now, the suppose we had that and stop these people coming. Hey, Come on, what are you man. doing That's here? Right. Oh, I come to visit Susie May. Who is Susie <laughs> May? You related to Susie May? Be ready to put something on them. With respect. <laughs> and it take them out be. of our community. Yeah. You don't come in here making whores out of our That's right. That's right. That's right. And Absolutely. we don't allow our women to be made whores. Yes, sir. Right, sir. There's a way to make a dollar, mm -hmm. and it's not selling yourself to nobody. I know you've got commercials going to take care of But them. I just want to say, and pimping our prosperity, because that's what they do too. They pimp our prosperity. Well, here's what we got to do. We got to make some prosperity with these commercials. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, we definitely have to go to commercial break now. Stick around, y'all. We'll be back in a few minutes. It's Daryl Cook Live, 106.3 Chicago R&B. Yeah. Hey, what's up, Chicago yeah, Land? This is your favorite son in law, all fan national speaker, Daryl K. Cook. And if you like Daryl, I know you're tired of the show. I just break in our city. You're far too many of us. I'm experienced in the tech here. Let me offer my service to the national speaker, Daryl K. Cook. I'm just going to say hi. I didn't even tell you. And then I'm going to say hi. 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 I'm going to say hi
to have me at your next event, please contact me at How we doing, sir? Oh, so, so you got this. And trial by fire. Yes, yes. Welcome back to Daryl Cook Live on 106.3 Chicago's R&B. I would like to thank my listening audience for continuing to listen to our show. Such a phenomenal show today. Great information is packed inside this show. So to all my listening audience, we're going to extend the show for another 30 minutes right yes. now because it's that important that we get this information out. So, Minister Farrakhan, there's been a wealth of information that you've given us today, and you gave us a checklist of solutions, things that we can do right now that's in front of us that we can take advantage of. And you talk so much about the financial part, and this is what I talk about every week on the show, not just economics, but group economics. Because we have to take a look at our community, and I always say that. I was always curious about that. You know, to walk out of my house and walk to 95th and Jeffrey and to see a beauty supply owned by Asian or see a liquor store owned by a rap or see a business owned by a European person in our community. And what I saw was that at the end of the day, before they got ready to leave, first of all, they've disrespected our woman all day long. Our youth can only walk into the store two at a time because they call them thieves. And then we have people that raise down the black gates in front of their stores, look both ways, 
get in that car and take their money back to their community and we'll never see that dollar again. And what I'm trying to teach us in our community is that we have to let this dollar circulate in our community. Our Jewish community circulates that dollar over 20 times. Asian community, 18 times. Latin community and European communities do that as well. You know how many times the dollar circulates in the black community? It's zero. With 100% consumption, 0% production, and that's a problem for us. And my key saying that I always say is, I don't want to see another man riding around in a land cruiser and don't have land to cruise on. Mm. Come on. That's a problem to me. Group economics, how can we make that work? I think you gave the answer. Go ahead. <laughs> Pooling your resources. That's number one. But if we don't trust each other and don't have love for each other, it'll be very difficult for somebody to take a dollar from their pocket, pool it with a dollar from your pocket, and everybody in this room put a dollar up, and then we start doing business, owning land, mm -hmm. creating food and agribusiness. All these empty lots in our community should be turned into gardens where we grow our own food because the food that we're eating is designed to kill us. So we know how to farm. We know how to put good seed in good earth and turn bad earth into good earth mm. so we can eat the food that will give us longer, mm -hmm. more productive life. Mm -hmm. And so we have studied and it's out there. You know, a carrot today is not the same as a carrot 50 years ago. When I was a young boy, that was a little longer than 50 <laughs> years ago, when I was a young boy, we never had health food stores. Our health food store was the market, the supermarket, where fresh food was brought from outside the city into the city. It didn't come from California to Boston or from uh, Florida to Boston. We were growing food on the outskirts of the city, so the food came in fresh. And so we had more life in that food. Right. Today, they're gassing fruits, taking them off the tree before they're ripe, and then ripening them with gas, right. and coloring them to make them look so pretty mm. in the supermarket, but you're ingesting death. Mm. My oh. dear brothers and oh, wow. sisters, look, I was coming out of Mexico and there was an English language newspaper and it was talking about the alligators in the Everglades in Florida. And there was so much estrogen in the water till the male organ of the male alligator was getting smaller and smaller and the sperm count was getting less and less. The same thing is happening today with us. The sperm count in the black male and white male going down, down, down. The penis shrinking. And when you see these things happening, these are chemical reactions. Mm -hmm. So the pharmaceutical company now comes out with a pill. Hey, it can grow longer. Mm. It can get stronger. Mm. <laughs> take this pill. And if you take these pills, be careful now, because you may develop breasts. <laughs> <laughs> So serious business <laughs> with a pill. Yeah. Then they take, listen to the commercials on television. They say, now, be careful of this one. The side effects are 
you, you might uh, uh, want to commit suicide yeah. because mm -hmm. it, it affects the way you think. Mm -hmm. Everything is chemistry. So if you got the right chemistry, then your body, which is chemical, this body has everything in it that's in the earth. And if you know the right um, amount of this and that, every organ in your body can be healed through nutrition, mm. not it's, pills. It's easy to get the pills. They sell them right in the neighborhood gas stations. Yeah. Less than $3 mm -hmm. to go ahead and tell you that this will make you stronger and bigger and stuff like that. So you even have little teenagers grabbing these pills, putting them into their system. You know, and they don't even have a chance as they get older as an adult, you know, before they're affected by it. So you can see, uh, Brother B. Cole, that there's a genocidal plan right. to take us out right. little by little. Uh -huh. And it's up to men like Brother Darrell and yourself and Tamara and the conscious people in this mm -hmm. studio complex to educate our people. Because without our knowledge making a change in our behavior, mm -hmm. the foods we eat, the way we cook the food, you're going to end up with all kind of cancers as we mm -hmm. are today. We lead in every cancer uh, uh, disease, mm. breast cancer, lung cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, brain cancer, pancreatic cancer, liver cancer, kidney cancer. We are dying mm -hmm. because of the way we eat and we have subjected ourselves to the merchants of death. Now, Brother Minister, your teacher the Honorable Elijah Muhammad wrote a book, How to Eat to Live. He also he also designed an economic blueprint for black people years ago. We have somehow gotten away from that. Not the nation, but the nation has gotten away from that. He had gas stations, farms, uh, <clears throat> fast food with healthy food choices. Are we doing anything to bring that back? We have to. We have to bring it back. Uh, we um, went back into Georgia and bought some of the 5,000 acres that he had that was sold. We bought it back and we're farming again. And we've raised almost uh, $2 million in an economic uh, fund. It's nearly $2 million. And uh, we intend to get it up to about 10 million and we're going back to Mississippi and Alabama mm. to buy some of that good earth and begin farming again. We have to feed, mm -hmm. clothe, and shelter ourselves. That we also is. had an economic plan yes. with just five cents. Everybody had a nickel a day. Would you please speak to our listeners about that nickel a day? We still have it. We do. Yeah. Yes. That's how we raised the... Two million. Yeah. Look, if you offered your child, your grandson, five cents, mm. what would he say to you? Beat it. <laughs> Scram. Because what could he buy for five cents? That's the point. Yes. You got to deal in dollars with your children. Otherwise, they don't respect you. But if you took a nickel a day, there's about 8 million workers among us at 5 cents a day. Now, 8 million, let me see, if you started with 5 cents a day, 7 days a week, that's 35 cents a week. How much is it a month? Four times that. How much is it a year? It comes up to about 15, 12 to 15 dollars a year. 
Eighteen dollars and twenty cents. Eighteen dollars and twenty cents. Yes, sir. Can you afford that? Yes, sir. Of mm -hmm. course. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And imagine millions of us doing something simple like that. Inside of a year, mm -hmm. you've got millions of dollars to invest in yourself. Mm -hmm. That's the premise that the dollar store was built on, and now it is one of the Fortune 500 economically, I mean, traded on the S&P. We really need to get back to sound economic policy among us. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that will hinder us if we get our own foot out of our own way. Mm -hmm. That's right. We are free to do business with the world. Mm -hmm. I have gone all over this earth linking the black struggle in America to the black struggle in Africa, in the Caribbean, in Central South America. People are ready to do business with us yes. if we are ready to do business yeah. with Absolutely. them. Absolutely. Yes. And you know, that, that just brings me to a point now because we're talking about this economics and um, Dr. Clyde Anderson, he talks a lot about Great brother. Yeah, power, powernomics. And he was saying that, you know, if we pulled all our resources together here in the United States, mm -hmm. African Americans, brothers and sisters, will make up the ninth wealthiest nation in the world. If we, we are get that. that. With the money that comes in yes, to sir. our community. And I, and I see it being spent on a daily basis. I can take just a zip code, um, 60618. Um, 60617 and just look at the parameters from State Street uh, back all the way towards the wild all the way east and I see that we spend over 16 million in lottery tickets on the hope of coming together as a community on the hope of putting money in our pocket but I think we need to do the work on what it is we're going to do with our money when we get it and that belief that you talked about Minister Farrakhan as you spoke right now I thought about the Million Man March and I thought about how my mouth dropped to the floor when you taught me group economics in real time. Mm -hmm. You said, go in your pocket, take out one dollar, one dollar. Now pass that forward. It's a million men out here, right? <laughs> then we should have a million dollars. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that. I put a frame around that and I said, whoa. That was just very powerful what happened. He built wealth in a matter of minutes. And I think what's lacking in our community is the love for each other to put my money in my brother's hand and know that it's secure. Why do we have that blockage right now when you've given us a blueprint for it already? Because we don't oh, trust. Sure. And what happens then, this is the only group that had a group in Washington raised money and had two um, CPA firms and we made a public disclosure That's right. of every nickel, every dime, and every dollar. That's right. Why? Because we want our people to know we're not robbers. That's right. We're not thieves. That's right. And you know what the enemy did? First of all, when he saw all those dollars go mm -hmm. up, <coughs> Pardon me. Yes, the preacher said to me, Farrakhan, are you going to proselytize your mm. faith? Mm. A wonderful brother. His name is Bishop Brookings. A wonderful man. I said, no, Bishop. I'm going to ask all these black men to go home and join a spiritual house of their choice, whether it be Christian, Hebrew, Muslim, I don't care, as long as it's teaching spiritual values. I said, I'm going to ask every one of these men to join an organization that's fighting for the rights of black people. That happened. So now the enemy said, well, what, what, what he did with the money? And when we called a press conference yes. with the CPAs of, I think it's either two or three firms, 
laid it out for the world. These white folk wouldn't even print. That's right. That's right. Because they make their trade in keeping us suspicious right. and doubting the, the righteousness of each other. Right. And I can't blame us because most of the people that take our money are liars and thieves. Mm. But in this digital age right now, you could track that. Like if we had a ambassador that actually, you could be the ambassador to that five cents economic development. I'm probably Program. the only one they would Absolutely. trust. Absolutely. Right. <laughs> and you can, right. just like you can track your online banking right now, you could track your online giving to this huge economic pool. But you, Minister Farrakhan, have done what absolutely no man in America has done. And that is figure out how to effectively effect, affect foreign policy. You can go in nations and they roll out the red carpet for you. But for some of our, and I put this in quotes, leaders here in America, they won't even open the gate for them. How have you accomplished that? You know, every one of our people respect courage. Right. Respect a man that is unafraid to speak truth to power. Yes, that's right. So my reputation preceded me because when Jesse Jackson was running for the presidency and members of the Jewish community came out against him, I stood up for Reverend Jackson's right to be president then I didn't realize I was stirring a hornet's nest. Mm -hmm. And when they saw that this black brother was taking them on for what they were saying and trying to do to Reverend Jackson, they marshaled their forces against me. Yes. And they thought I was going to lay down. But that's not the way my teacher taught. That's, that's right. right. What did he do? What did that's he right. do? I fought. Go ahead. Right. And I met at uh, Father George Clemens' uh, house when he was over. What's the name of his church? Holy Angels. Holy, Holy Angels. Angels. Yeah. And uh, uh, Judge Pinchin was there. And uh, I, I, I believe Father Flager may have been there, J Father mm -hmm. George Clements was there, people from the mayor's office were there, and they were telling me that please kind of tamp down mm -hmm. with, with your talk about the Jews. And I said, look, I got so angry. I said, I'll go back to my corner and take the stool and beat the hell out of it. <laughs> yes, sir. You don't talk me down when I'm in a fight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you can't <laughs> encourage me <laughs> to right. fight, <laughs> then the hell out the way. Right. The fight is on. Yes. Because it's on. It's mm. on. So after wow. that, hey, they came after me so hard. Yes. And I had dinner with them. And when we had dinner, at the home of, I think it was Rabbi Marx and Rabbi Shalman was there and Cupsonet was there and many of you young people don't know Cupsonet. <laughs> but Tamara knows. No, I don't. I'm with them. <laughs> <laughs> don't get it twisted. I, <laughs> I always thought you were lying. <laughs> no, Take that mic away. But Herb <laughs> Cupsonet was a great writer for one of the major newspapers in Chicago. And we had put out a book called The Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews. And we were talking and getting along fine. We even had dinner because we can eat their food if they cook it right. And, and they can eat ours. And after dinner, they said to me, well, 
fact, hon, everything was going nice, but this is going to be tough love. Yes, teacher. And listen to what they told me. They said, Farrakhan, if you want to be a friend of the Jewish community, we're going to have to watch you and listen to you for a protracted period of time mm -hmm. until we are satisfied in words that you are a friend. And then they said, we want you to stand up and denounce that book, Secret Relationship Between Blacks and Jews. And third, they said, nobody that's not a friend of the Jewish community has ever been written of well in history because they own all the publishing houses. So they wanted me to answer. I'm just going to make it real quick. <laughs> real quick. <laughs> yeah, so we got to see these coming up, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We got a few more commercials. We're going to get that money in. But I just want to end, end with this. They said, Farrakhan, you got your truth and we got ours. I said, sir, the Torah says, Justice stands afar off and equity cannot enter because truth has fallen in the streets. It's not your truth or my truth. We've got to agree on what is the truth. You have your perception and I have mine. I said, now about that book, Secret Relationship, I'll denounce it in the morning if you do this. Since we only quoted Jewish scholars, Jewish rabbis, Jewish historians, right. you get up in the morning and denounce every one of those scholars of yours mm. as on. liars. Mm. Come on. Come on. And if you do that, I'll denounce the book. And lastly, I'm here because I want to be your friend. But if being your friend means... I've got to deny the truth mm -hmm. and apologize to you for telling the truth. Yours is a friendship I don't need, mm -hmm. and yours is a friendship I don't want. Oh, right now. And the war was on. Oh. Yes, sir. <laughs> so, yes, sir. Amazing. so that's so the way black leaders should be. Yes. Speak truth to power. Stand up and deliver the message, and God will protect you. Mm -hmm. If you do that. Yes. Brother Minister, Thank I got two things show. to say to you. Yes, ma'am. Number one, we got a shout out to Joshua for making this possible. Joshua Farrakhan, thank you so much. And you have something coming out called Let's Change the World Documentary of Your Life. People do not don't know that you are a accomplished violinist and that you are changing the world through your music. Now, I want you all to get his his uh, documentary as soon as it comes out because it That's will right. change your life. You certainly have changed ours. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Yes.